Record of Fugitives, December 1855, from the papers of Sidney Howard Gay, read by Frank Blissett. December 1st, John Bright and his wife arrived from Malin B. Linton, Pennsylvania, of the same party with Harriet, November 10th, who is his sister. After the dispersion at Wilmington, John and his wife found their way to Linton's and remained there till yesterday. John belonged to John Dwar and his wife to Katie Ringle, paid for them one dollar and forwarded to Albany. December 3rd Thomas Castle, aged sixteen, and Ezekiel Chambers, about fifteen, of the same party as above. Tom is John Bright's stepson, and belonged to Samuel R. Perkins. Zeke belonged to John Swan, and was raised by Harriet. Have been staying at Elijah Pennypacker's, Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. Sent to Syracuse, and paid eight dollars. December 3rd. John belonged to one Stark, concealed eighteen days on board the schooner Central from Savannah by the steward, taken out by Napoleon and kept here for several days, sent to Syracuse, twenty-five cents. December 5th. Jacob Hall and his wife Cornelia came on from Pennsylvania, where they have been almost five months. Jacob belonged to Colonel William Hutchins of Baltimore County, Maryland, Ladies' Manor, and Cornelia to the widow Sally McGall, was a waiter and farmhand. Jacob took the colonel's horses one night and drove about fifteen or eighteen miles to Newmarket, then turned the horses loose to find their way back if they could, went forward on foot to Little York, Pennsylvania, where they arrived that evening. A white person whom they met took them to the colored church, and there they fell among friends. Jacob, from that time till quite recently, drove a horse on the canal from Millersburg to Wrightsville, Cornelia remaining at Millersburg. Jacob had been promised his freedom at twenty-one by his mistress, but she dying before that time, he was taken by Hutchins and held as his slave. Cornelia was about to be sold, but not liking her proposed new master, determined to cleave to her husband. Sent to Albany, two dollars. John T. Jones of Chestertown, Maryland, left home at night, taking a horse belonging to Richard S. Thomas and a buggy belonging to his niece, Mary Sharks, who lived nearby, and drove to Wilmington, Delaware, where he arrived the next morning, was taken to Thomas Garrett by a colored man, and by him forwarded on his way to Philadelphia, left behind him wife, father, mother, and two brothers, who are all free. John had overheard his master say that, when he got his corn crop in, he meant to put some of his darkies in his pocket, as they were getting away too fast. He would make sure of his. John took the hint and put himself in his own pocket. Washington Bordley, of the same place, belonged to George Westcott, president of Chestertown Bank, who treated him hardly and threatened to sell him. He suggested the plan of escape to John, which was put into execution within a couple of days. Has a free mother and a brother and two sisters slaves. Eight dollars fifty cents. December 6th. Henry Cooper, born Isaac Ross, nineteen years old, came from Middleton, Maryland. 
house servant of Thomas S. Merritt, born in Delaware near Newcastle, sold with his brother and three others by a Frenchman named Augustine Millet. Merritt bought him at auction was treated kindly by Merritt except when he was drunk, and then he would beat him. Ran away on the night of the 22nd last month. Traveled only in the night. In two days reached Delaware City, thence to Wilmington and Derby, all the way on foot. At Derby stopped one night with a Mrs. Jackson, a Quaker, sent on to Philadelphia and slept all the next night in a milk wagon, but was very cold. Went out toward North Chester. Stopped at a house and inquired for Quakers. Was taken up by a man in a buggy and carried to Philadelphia, to some white man's store, then to the anti-slavery office. Is cousin to one of the Chestertown party lately forwarded. Sent to Syracuse, dinner, $4.25. December 19th. Mary Curtis, 19 years of age, slave of Ben Gwinner of Chester County, Maryland, housemaid. Has been living for four years with a Mrs. Grant in Baltimore, where she was sent because her health failed from doing farm work. Gwinner died recently, and hearing that the slaves were to be sold, a free colored woman induced her to leave and gave her money to pay her way to Philadelphia. Left father and mother behind her. $3.75. December 21st. James Griffin of Baltimore County, Howard Township, 22 years old. Joshua Fitch, master. He worked for Fitch's brother, part of the time, in Baltimore. He had a wife and five children, but the mother and two youngest were sold two years ago to South Carolina. His master told him some time ago that, as he was insolvent, he should have to sell him and the children, and gave him permission to find new owners. He found buyers for the little ones, but concluded to run away with himself. Sent Jones, Bordley, and Griffin to Syracuse, $14.65. William Brown of Prince George's County, Queen Anne's Township, 25 years of age, William Elliot Master formerly belonged to an uncle of his late owner, one William Wells, who emancipated his slaves by will. But the will was set aside for some reason, and the estate was divided between a niece and this Elliot. Brown was a favorite of his old master, but was forbade by his new one, when he fell into his hands, to take so much liberty. He was probably what is called a saucy nigger. At any rate, he refused to be whipped, and this insubordination had so bad an effect upon the other slaves that he was to have been sold to go to Georgia before Christmas. He started for Washington about five weeks ago, and walked all the way to Columbia, where he took the cars for Philadelphia. He suffered severely during the journey, from cold and wet, being often obliged to ford ponds and streams. His clothes sometimes froze to him, and he would lie all day in the sun to thaw and dry them. To Syracuse, $3.75. William Price, 25 years old, from Windsor, North Carolina, Belonged to Governor Bragg. Is by trade a stave maker. His master moved about a year ago, nearly 300 miles from Windsor, where William was compelled to leave his wife. A promise that he should go and see her not being fulfilled, and no prospect of being, 
he ran away and went to Windsor. He made himself a sort of cave somewhere in the neighborhood and lived there and in swamps for ten months. He at last left North Carolina with Captain Fountain and is the last of the party of twenty one who escaped in his vessel. Three dollars forty five cents. December twenty sixth. Daniel Johns, born Joseph Cornish, forty years old, from Cambridge, Dorchester County, Maryland, is a blacksmith by trade and a minister of the African Methodist Episcopal Church by profession. Left on the eighth on foot for Griffin's Point, where he had heard there was a vessel about to sail, on which he could get a passage worked his passage on her to Baltimore, and walked thence into Pennsylvania. Forwarded by Still, sent to Syracuse, three dollars fifty cents. That was Record of Fugitives, December 1855, from the papers of Sidney Howard Gay. Read by Frank Blissett.